Not totally sure what shows up on the front. Well, I gotta get out of here before that screen does that again. Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to Owl Farms Work. The sun is shining on me. We are headed to the Farm Progress Show in Decatur, Illinois. I was originally not intending on going to the Farm Progress Show just because we had so much stuff going on around the farm, but fortunately, uh, we wrapped everything up, I think, ahead of schedule, so we got a little bit of free time. I decided that I'm gonna go down on the Wednesday to the Farm Progress Show to check things out. Um, one thing I do like to do is check out the JCB and maybe Case booths to check out their Optum because after we had demoed that Case Magnum, I had been left with kind of like a wanting more just to kind of climb up in one because I've never been in an Optum and people have said that they are highly improved. So I'd like to hop in one of those and I'm just gonna walk around the Farm Progress show, meet people, um, check out the booths, just kind of see anything that catches my eye and um, it should be a pretty good time. I left uh, at about 5.30 this morning and I had a few stops to make along my way so I'm a little bit delayed but it is a four and a half hour drive to Decatur. So people have said that it's kind of muddy down there, so this ought to be fun. Taking the silver bullet down into muddy conditions only spins one wheel at a time since the traction lock does not work. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully I don't get stuck and need someone to pull me out. Anyway, uh, we're gonna head down to the Farm Progress show and uh, hopefully I can get there this morning yet and I'll still have several hours to walk around the show. Somebody's in a much bigger hurry than I am. Did, did I not pass him earlier? How'd he get ahead of me? Ooh, here's the other kind of green. Hello, beautiful. So this is the 270T by JCB. This is a tracked loader. It's a compact loader. Whereas the teleskid that we have is the 3TS 8T. So pretty similar. About the only difference that I can really tell is just the boom. It doesn't have the telescopic boom on it. But otherwise, everything is pretty much the exact same. <laughs> All right, so I'm standing here, what was your name again? Derek. Derek with JCB. What's good about the fast tracks? So the fast track, I mean, it's just a totally different machine. So speed, efficiency, safety, it's gonna do all of that. Uh, if you look at the machine itself, it's got a mid-mount cab design, which looks unique, but it's really kind of your standard front wheel assist tractor, except for the fact that it goes 43 miles an hour. It's got independent front and rear suspension. It's got disc brakes all the way around. So we're keeping that power to the ground. We're yep. stopping that machine on a dime. It's, uh, it's just an entirely different tractor than what we're used to here in North America. Yeah, it's definitely a different design, but uh, it's pretty popular overseas, so. It is, it is, and we're making headway here. I mean, right. JCB material handling is all we do. Obviously, you, you know what we're doing with um, with the teleskid side, but yep. when we get into this, you get those manure guys that are really trying to go out and, and gain some cycle times with what they're trying to do, and we're, we're doing that with this machine. Yeah, that's pretty cool. How many horses is this one? This one here is 335. In our large frame, we run a 290 and a 335 horse machine. And then our small frame, we go from 160 horse up to 220 horse. Okay, cool. So, this one is designed with a front point link for guys that are doing 
you know, any sort of front attachments, triple mowers, things like that. Pushing silage maybe? Pushing silage some. I've got some guys up in Minnesota run snow blowers on the front of it. Really? Smaller frame machines and uh, moving quite a bit of snow up in, in those Minnesota winters with them. Awesome. Well, I'm about to climb up in it. I've never been in a fast track and I'm looking forward to it. Alex, hi, how are we doing? Not too bad. So, could you tell me a little bit about the JCB Fast Track? I've never been in one before in my life, and uh, could you just run us around the cab? Yeah, absolutely. So, we're in the Command, Command Plus cab on the JCB. It's something we rolled out with the 4000 series about five years ago. I'm um, on the front side of the screen, um, right in front of the operator, you're going to see the vitals to the machines. So, you're going to see fuel consumption, you're going to see RPMs, temperature of the tractor, fuel level, def level, and so on. All the important stuff right All up front. All the important stuff, correct. Good. Uh, as we come down, we got the column um, that's new to our new to the Command Plus cab um, that allows you to set a feature, or set a certain height uh, with this lever down below once you're tracted, okay. lock it in, and then return to that same spot thereafter every time. Okay, so cool. just quick return to. Yep. Um, as we move to the right, we'll be looking at our, um, our joystick. Our joystick's fully customizable on the top end. Um, so the four black buttons in the middle, you can select anything on the corner post and down to the, the levers, um, to the front three point and the throttle and uh, preset the buttons to okay. you like. All right. As we keep moving to the right, you're going to have all your controls for your front PTO right there at easy reach, um, as well as your auxiliary controls for trailer lights and trailer power. Okay. Down there. Seems up here we got a bunch more s switches yep. for lights. So these soft windshield. buttons up here are all gonna be for different features. The top side are gonna be more your cosmetics for lights per se, heated okay. mirrors, hillside hold, transportation lock, that's always a safety one. Um, the ones down below are gonna be a bit more application specific. So um, if we look at the top two, we're gonna have our four wheel drive and four wheel drive auto. Yep. Our diff lock, a feature we call active traction, which helps with tillage applications. Um, further down, we're gonna have our four different PTO settings. Okay. And then a very cool feature is going to be called rapid steer. Rapid steer takes your steering revolutions on the steering wheel down by 50%. So if you're in a, a an application that requires a high demand of moving the steering wheel, it just takes the effort out of it. Okay. Uh, so it makes it a lot quicker for everybody. So it's a different setting for the sensitivity. Absolutely. Okay. The sensitivity is reduced significantly. All right. Cool. So if I were to hop in one of these things, what are the steps that I have to go through to get this thing moving. It's about like driving a car to be honest. About like driving a car? Okay. Absolutely. So the first step in th when driving a car is taking it out of park. So okay. the first step would be actually releasing that, that orange lever, which I would say someone in the cab has already released for us. It's in the up, <laughs> in the up position there. Okay. So that would be locked. But okay. if you pull it's it out locked. and released it, that would be, uh, let's go. Okay. Um, to select your direction, that's the next step in a car, right? Yep. So you do the same here. You have two options. You can either use your left hand reverser, which most people are, are used to, or if you become quite acquainted with the tractor, you can then reach over to the joystick and just use forward reverse to select your okay. direction. What transmission does this have in it? It's got a CVT transmission in it, um, okay. which allows us to have two ranges, a field working range, which is low, zero to 25 miles per hour, yep. and then a high range, zero to 43. Okay, how do you adjust your speed then? Just by moving this yep. forward and backward, just yep. like that? So just like I was comparing to a car, it's gonna have D mode. D mode is driving just like the car. You hit your brake, stop, you hit your gas pedal to go. Okay. It's got integrate. It's got enough technology in here that it's going to know how to increase and in, uh, what RPMs you need to accelerate with the load behind you. Effective power management. Exactly. Yeah. There's other modes that make the tractor capable of really doing any applications, all going all the way down to I think it's 50 meters per hour or less. We need to look in decks for that, but um, it's fully capable of doing anything a, a Vario transmission built for. All right. Very cool. All right, well, thanks for giving us the run around on the cab. Absolutely, thank you. It's a little baby. Had to come to the Rhino Ag booth. Couldn't come to one of these shows without visiting it. We've got the hydraulically controlled 1540 blade. I know Travis would go real nuts over this thing. <laughs> it looks like it's got the hydraulic leveling as well as the ability to set your pitch on it as well. Rhino Ag just bought Dixie Chopper.
Could we see one of these things on the farm at some point in the future? Maybe. Goods? Oh yeah. Fancy. So now we're up here in a Cat Challenger. Hmm. Room to stand on the fenders. You can walk around the entire cab on this side. I've never gotten to run one and I won't really don't have an opinion on them until I can actually run one in the field but overall I mean the build quality on them seems top-notch the quality inside the cab everything seems to be built fairly nice on the arm here everything is really localized it's easy to find what you're looking for there aren't buttons scattered all around I mean up on the front you have your uh, AC controls and your lights um, but as far as actually running the tractor everything that you need is right next to you, which is a great thing. Gotta keep the ball rolling. Wonder what I'm gonna come across next. So now I am finally up in a Case IH Optum 300 CBT. So overall, um, looking around in this cab, it's pretty similar to the Case IH Magnum 210 that we had tried out a couple weeks ago, uh, for those of you who have seen our previous videos. And I don't know, it just seems fairly similar to that tractor. I was told that I should get in a mop get in an Optum and um, see how it feels. And they still have the same 3D printed engine control there, which I'm not crazy about because that paint on there does chip. At least I think it's plastic. And then we have the dial on the bottom there. That's how you can tell that it's CVT. It's to set your limits um, for your different gears because it is a continuously variable transmission. From what I've used case, they do seem like pretty good tractors. This one was made it right in England. Interesting. But as always, um, I'll have more of an opinion on this thing when I can actually get it out and do some tillage with it. Um, I'm sure I won't be disappointed in it, but um, this one actually has the monitor in it as well. So it's time to hop out and continue on with my day. going this is interesting <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna work what's that you got a good view on that oh, real bad it's funny we're right in nice to meet you nice to meet you too where are you guys out of I'm from southern Illinois are oh, you yeah? yeah cool awesome do you farm yourself uh, my grandparents do yeah oh, right. they, they farm corn and soybeans Let's see what the latest and greatest deer has have to offer. Can't believe they don't leave the keys in these. It's like they don't even trust us. Did you sign my hat? Yeah, sure. Come on up. Where do you want me to sign it? Uh, anywhere. Anywhere? All right. Where are you guys from? Indiana. Okay. Well, what part? North, south? North. Okay. West. All right. All right. What have we got here? Can we get a picture real quick? Yeah, sure. So sitting here in the cab of this 6155R, and um, Deer has had their stuff together for a long time, and I don't mean like how they build their tractors, I just mean all of their controls. Everything is right here on the command arm. They have a light control up here, as well as a left hand reverser on this side. Uh, but other than that, I mean, that's one thing I like about Deer's designs. They have everything right by your hand. I mean, they don't have anything right here because your hand is probably gonna spend a good amount of time right here, controlling the transmission. Someday. John Deere's setup this year is very similar to their setup two years ago when it was here. Now, 
Now the hitch on these articulates sits back so far that you cannot see what's going on with the hitch from back here. Uh, however, it does come with the advantage of putting the implement further behind you, which makes it easier to see directly behind you. The thing that you're pulling isn't off to the sides. It's all back there. But then on the other hand, it also makes it harder to turn. You have to have bigger, larger open fields, which we do not have. <laughs> Weird. What this is doing behind the seat. Great, now it looks like I broke it. There we go. That looks more right. <laughs> <laughs> So now we are up in the legendary Fent. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about Fent. Um, they're very popular over in Europe and they're pretty much the John Deere of Europe is what I've been told. So looking at the arm here on the seat, you may notice that it's very similar to the Challenger. That's because they are pretty much the same tractor. We have this joystick, um, which is fairly similar to the one in the Challenger. Um, it still has the toggle switch in the back. Um, However, I don't think the Challenger had this upper portion here. More controls. Um, thing with the Fent is that there are more controls up underneath the steering wheel. So anyway, very nice tractor up on the inside. The hood is just massive. And this thing has got humongous tires on it. This is the 1050 Vario. The build quality on these fence is pretty cool and it even has a sunroof or an escape hatch however you want to look at it <laughs> anyway uh, time to let other people in I'm not going to turn the tractor on. Got to light it up. So here's my first look at fence intelligence screen. Interesting. I like the feel of the, of the display. I like how they have the handle on the right side because when you're bouncing around in the tractor, oh, you can actually adjust the, the display too but you can secure your hand on there and then you can move the controls with the buttons up on the right hand of the screen. Do I know how to work this screen? Absolutely not, but that's for another day when we actually have one of these out on the farm. Turn the key off. You know, you really don't have to pull my leg. I guess I would try a fin. <laughs> so now we're up in a versatile. One of my life goals is to drive every single tractor brand there is. So I can finally have a valid opinion on which tractor brand I feel is the best. <laughs> I have really high opinions of Deer and New Holland so far. Um, I've heard really good things about Verstal and I'd really love to be able to drive one of these things someday on the farm maybe i came really close to trying one last year um there's one at a new holland de dealer close to us and i was really close to just walking in there and being like how much for this thing for like a week but for now all i can do is trust what mike less has to say about them and believe that they're pretty good tractors How are we doing, Mike? Good. Who opened the hood and didn't close it? No, it wasn't me. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was out at the field demos. And oh, I were you? I leave the lot and I come in here and it looks like there's a service school going on. <laughs> These tractors always kind of felt like a uh, beefier version of the 8030 series. John Deere's. 
But anyway, um, until we can get one of these on the farm, you guys might just have to look to Mike Les's channel to see how the versatiles run in the field. Check out this bad boy. This is what I'm talking about. So now we're up in the New Holland T8 Auto Command T8 435 Genesis. And uh, this is what I mean by the different hand controls versus the case. Um, I just love New, Hol New Holland's setup for your hand control because you have controls for all the SEVs for your forward and reverse shuttle. Um, engine controls, adjustments for the CVT, and uh, overall, I just like the build quality of the New Holland cabs better. No hidden controls, everything's right out front for you. <laughs> That's kind of cool, it's almost like a computer mouse they have the three point set up for. That's pretty cool. Not totally sure what shows up on the front. Um, time to just get out. <laughs> what the heck? What the heck happened there? Okay, that was like that. Someone, I was wondering why it was like Okay, good as new. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> what the heck? Here I am talking about build quality in the cab. <laughs> the front monitor just pops off. Okay, yeah, anyway, um, I assume that is not supposed to do that, but I would assume up there you have your fuel, engine speed, um, gear speed, stuff like that. I would imagine, don't know for sure, haven't ran one of these yet, don't believe the key's in it, of course not, they don't trust me, look what I did with the display. Got a 115 volt outlet right there. If you'll remember my case review video, I had mentioned that I didn't see why they couldn't move around the vents for the AC or the heat and it appears on this tractor they're still all in the same spot so six vents all in the same spot yeah you do have some for the windshield but looking around there is one right there and there's one over here as well as ones along there so I give them a little bit more credit there well, I gotta get out of here before that screen does that again. So now here we are in the working cab of the T8. Everything's totally functional. As you can see, the screen is working there. Looks like they're running a demo straight tag, straight track. When you pull back on it, you can actually see your speed reduce on the monitor there. That's cool. So back at the New Holland booth, I asked them if the display was supposed to do that. And they said, since everybody's been in and out of that tractor, since it's a pre-production, uh, the display mount has gotten loose so since the tractor is leaning back has a tendency to just fall off even when you like open the door they said that the production model will not have that happen which is a good thing but overall that display uh, in the working uh, cab was actually really bright it was easy to see very clear and uh, looks like a de pretty decent screen and with that uh, the place closes in like 15 minutes, so I gotta find my way back to the car. I have no idea. And now it's time to begin the long journey back home through the Illinois countryside. Looking around, I can definitely tell that the soybeans especially are behind. Uh, talking to some of the farmers at the Farm Progress show, 
they said the same thing that the crops around here were about 30 days behind because of the rain that they had gotten this spring they had mudded them in and it kept them out of the field so that's pretty much it for this video thanks for watching guys be sure to check out all of our other videos be sure to like comment and subscribe and be sure to check us out on facebook instagram twitter and snapchat all how farms work and with that i'll see you next time that is definitely a car engulfed in flames hashtag just illinois things <laughs>